What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today we're going to be going through a Chem 118B practice exam for midterm 1. Uh, I created all these problems myself and I think that they are reflective of what you could expect to see on your first exam. Uh, I have 10 problems here. going to kind of fly through them. If you need more help, uh, I can make different videos walking through them step by step in more depth. But here, um, under the assumption that you guys have at least some knowledge, and we're just going to try to work through them and make sense of it, all right? Let's get started. All right, so this first one, we're obviously working with alkene reactions. I got a double bond here, and I got H2PDC. I know H2 likes to add sin, so this is sin. I know my H2s are going to go on the same side, so my final answer should have those H's coming out on the same side and then that CH3 will move accordingly just like that and then I also could have done it the other way so I'll put plus an antimer okay so those H's could have been going away let's go on to number two so number two here we have HBr so I know that the first thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna grab an H and then I'm gonna form a carbocation so I gotta put the carbocation in the more stable position just like this and then my little H went here I already had one H so now I have two and then I have a BR minus floating around so I'll take that BR and have it come in here either from the front or from the back so my final answer should have a mix so I'll do this and I'll say racemic okay so that BR could have came in from the front or from the back. Let's go on to number three. Here we have HBR and H2O2. I also could have written ROAR. So just be comfortable with those terms. Uh, we introduced the term anti-Murkovnikov. I'm going to do a video on this walking through the mechanism. But basically, um, we want to put the radical on the more stable carbon, which would be more substituted by the number of carbons around it. In this case, I see that my carbon here it would be tertiary if it formed a tertiary radical. And then over here, this would only be secondary, so I don't want to put the radical on the secondary. So what I do is I put the radical on the tertiary, which means the BR has to go on the other carbon. Okay, so we'll have to walk through that mechanism in a different video. But essentially, there would be a radical occupied in the tertiary spot. So the BR has to go in the other spot. So nothing goes there except for my CH3 and an H. And then a BR group will get added here. So anytime you see H2O2, for the most part, we're thinking anti Markovnikov. There will be an exception, and we'll talk about that later. Let's move on to number four. We got HCl. So this will form a carbocation. And you know the carbocation has to go on the more stable tertiary spot, so that means my CL will also come in there just like that. If I say HCl and ROAR, this is where you could see some students get tripped up on an exam. I've definitely seen this. Because you see ROAR, you're thinking you want to put the CL in the anti Markovnikov spot, but we only put the BR in the anti Markovnikov if we have an alkene with HBR. We can't do the same thing with HCl, it kind of has to do with sterics, but essentially your final answer here is going to have the CL in that tertiary spot versus the secondary spot. Okay, so we're not going to put it at the secondary spot, even though it's still an ROOR or could have been an H2O2 peroxide. All right, so just make sure you catch that and you don't get tripped up on that when you see that on your exam. All right, let's move on to number six. This one, pretty straightforward. The uh, H is going to get grabbed, right? Then we're going to form an OH. And then my OH is going to come to the more stable spot. And I'd expect to put an OH group right there. Not too bad. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven does a cool little mechanism here. I'll just do it very quickly. 
but essentially the BR gets snagged by the double bond. At the same time, the BR uses a set of lone pairs to grab a different side of that double bond. And then when the BR gets hit, a BR gets kicked out. So it's a BR minus floating around. And then we have an epoxide on the same side. Okay, notice the epoxide we could say is sin. Just like that. So we have a BR that's not very happy. So this BR minus is going to come around the back side, fix that problem. And your final answer should have a BR coming out one way and a BR going out the other way. And then, of course, plus an antimer because it was arbitrary to put the BR coming out of the board. I could have said the BR epoxide was going to be into the board. So that's why we get plus an antimer. Let's move on. Number eight here. We got three more problems. Let's crank this out. Number eight here, we got a double bond. So just like in the previous problem, we know we're going to form an epoxide. So we have BR epoxide. And then something needs to go attack from the other side. There is a BR minus floating around, but generally when they give you something else that can act as a nucleophile, typically below the arrow, they're telling you, hey, I want to put this thing there instead of the BR. So let's use the O go in here that H would get cleaned up by the BR minus form some HBR but again essentially you're gonna have a BR coming out one way and the O R group going out the other way and then of course plus an antimer okay awesome number nine we have an epoxide I'm in acidic conditions, so which side am I going to be attacking, A or B? Because I'm in acidic conditions, I know I want to attack the more substituted side, so my group's going to be coming in here once this becomes protonated. And we're going to essentially open this thing up, so I've got to be careful here labeling everything. Let's do A, and here's OH and then B is right here I have my new group attacking from beneath okay so here's my new group O C 2 H 5 right that that H here I know will end up getting deprotonated off to become just an OR group so I'm not gonna draw it in and then also off of B I still have my group here and a little H and they didn't draw any stereochem so my final answer is not going to have any stereochem if I just kind of clean it up I see that I have a A B C D carbon chain so let me just go ahead and do a four carbons just like this OH group coming off A B C D and then I know off of B I have an O C2H5. Okay, awesome. If I was in basic conditions, then I know I would attack the less hindered side. Let's finish this out. Number 10. All right, we have a alkene HBR just like we've seen before. I'm going to draw an intermediate step here. So I know that the double bond is going to grab an H, kick out a BR. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we get. So I know that I'm going to have a carbocation on this spot, just like that. If I label this A, B, C, and D, and this is E and F, I can see that the carbocation can rearrange if I break open this ring. And I'm going to make a new connection from B to E. Okay, and A is also going to now is, is still connected to, to E. So let's see what happens when I do that. It can actually form a five membered ring. So if we label it correctly, we'll be able to figure out what it looks like. So here is B. B still has this group. B is now connected to E. 
all right, and E has F methyl group, and E is connected to A, nothing changed there, A is connected to D, D is connected to C, and C is connected to B, and then we have to figure out where that carbocation rearranged, so the carbocation was on E, and it looks like now, when we do that, we can actually get the carbocation to be on this spot right here. So it's going to move to A because A had only one H, right? And it had its connection to B, but it no longer has its connection to B. So there's only one H here, which gives A the carbocation. And check this out. This E here can do a methyl, excuse me, a hydride shift. And then I can even now put the carbocation on a tertiary spot, just like this. And now my Br minus that's been floating around will come in here. And my final answer looks just like this. Perfect. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next time.